Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today, I just want to show a simple way to set up a button that you can hold to click. So if you have some important thing that you don't want just instantly happening on a tap or a click and you want to have it so that you have to hold the button down maybe it's a clear or a reset something like that in fact this actually came from needing to reset something by holding the button instead of just tapping it so let me show you how it works and then i'll show you how to code it real quick it's pretty simple though so i've got a button here and i can click on it and you may have noticed a little red thing going up if i hold the button down the little bar goes up and when it's done, something happens. An event fired off that just turned off my directional light. So let's take a look at how this is set up and then we'll show you the code. So if we go over here, I've got a canvas with a single button on it. So I just created a canvas, added a button. In fact, what I'm gonna do is stop, delete, and just go through these steps. So here we go, let's delete the canvas. We're gonna go game object, UI, and create a button. It's gonna give us a canvas automatically. Now I've got a button right here. I'm just gonna scale this up so that it's nice and big and easy to see now again if i just press play and click you know i'll have a button that i click it should just kind of work and we'll get a little highlight but what i want is this long click effect and realistically i don't even need this button because i don't really want to do anything on the actual click so what i'm going to do is just remove the button script and then i'm going to add this long click button instead so just drop this on and you'll see I've got a field here for required hold time and then a standard unity event to do something when it's done. So I hit plus to add in an event handler and um, let's, yeah, here, I'm just gonna hook up the directional light again. So drop the directional light in, set a game object, set active as the uh, method that we wanna call and setting it to false. Now there's also a spot for a fill image and we have this required hold time. So I'm gonna set the required hold time to just one so that would be one second. And then we're gonna need an image to do that line or the you know the growing thing over the button. Now you don't necessarily have to have this. We could actually make this all work without it, but I kinda of like that little effect that shows that it's counting up. So to do that, what I do is just create a new image under my button, a UI image, um, and then center and stretch. Then we need to switch it over to be filled. So what I'm gonna do is just drop in a little sprite that's just a, actually I think it's just a white block right now. It could just be a single pixel too. And then change this over to be filled. So that way we can slide it up and down to do the filling. And here it's on a radial fill. So if we do it like this, it's actually just gonna kinda circle in and fill up. In fact, let's just leave it that way so it's a little bit different. I'm gonna half fill it so I can get an idea of what it looks like. Change the color to, I'm gonna go with a blue this time or greenish blue, and then give it some alpha. There we go. Now I'm gonna slide this back down, click on the button again, assign the image to that fill image, hit play, we'll watch it, and then we'll look at the code, see exactly how everything's set up. So here we go, just click the button, you can see it goes. If I let go, it resets. If I go all the way to the end, the event fires off. All right, so how does this work? Let's look at the code. So the first thing you notice is we're not inheriting from button. That You could do it that way, you could inherit from a button, um, add an extra functionality and stuff onto the button, but I found that that's not always the best way to go. It's not usually the easiest. We have to do some custom editor work to make the editor work with the button's current custom editor that kind of already exists. And we have a bunch of extra stuff that we may not care about. You know, do we care about a highlight? Probably not in this case. We definitely don't care about a regular click because this button is only gonna be used to do a long click. Now we could combine them and have you know both on there, but I, I like going nice and separate here. Just another script that's a mono behavior and implements these two interfaces. We have the eye pointer down handler and eye pointer up handler. Now when you add these interfaces, you have to add in these two methods. So if I didn't have these methods here, right, if I just comment that out, you'll see I'll get an error. And what I can do is just hit control period in Visual Studio, hit implement interface, and it'll actually generate that method for me. So here it is, that on pointer down method. Since I already have that up above, I'm just gonna delete it though, uncomment it, and then take a quick look at it. So in on pointer down, we get an event data. We don't care about that at all. We just care right now that um, the user has pushed down on this object. So when they do that, we just set a Boolean called pointer down to true, and I just did a little debug log so you can kind of see that happening. So if I go back in to the console, you see we have these on pointer up and down messages. And if I clear, let's do a, a clear, hit play. Oh, I broke something real quick. I forgot to save. 
Let's jump back over to Unity or to Visual Studio and resave my file with that implementation there. Now if I hit play, you'll see we'll get these little log messages. So here we go. So well actually not when I hit play, when I click the button or when the pointer goes down. So pointer down hit and I never did up. If I release, you'll see up. Now if I keep clicking it, or just a regular click, we get a down and an up. There's a down and an up again. So let's go back to the code one more time. So we are marking a Boolean for pointer down to true. On pointer up, we're again just logging and we're calling a reset method. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But first let's take a look at this pointer down Boolean. So the way this works is in update, if the pointer is down, so if we, we've clicked and we haven't released, we increment a timer, a pointer down timer. This is just a float. So if we go up here, you see it's just a private float. We increment it by time.delta time, the amount of time that's passed. And then we check to see if the pointer down timer is greater than the required hold time. Technically, this should be greater than or equal to. We can just fix the bug. Now, if it is greater than or equal to the hold time, so if the hold time is two seconds and this is counted up for two seconds, we call the on long click unity event, assuming that it's assigned, and then we do a reset. So let's look at the on click. To set this up, I've just made a public unity event called on long click, and that's what's showing up here in the inspector. So this uh, on long click. And normally I wouldn't just make a public field, but for a unity event like this, it's usually a bit easier to just set it up that way, and it's not a, as big a deal as like a normal private field that I would want in the editor and make serialized. In fact, even in this case, normally I, this should be serialized and this should probably be private. Just make stuff cleaner. Um, let's just jump back into the code now. So again, if we get hold long enough, we invoke it, we call reset. And the other thing that we do, regardless of how long we've held it, so outside of this condition, is we adjust that fill image, fill amount, by the pointer down timer amount divided by the required hold time. So this is just gonna give us a percent, a zero to 1% of how long we've held it down. And it could go above one, but fill amount's gonna cap at one anyway. So if we held it down for more than a second, theoretically it could go slightly above, it doesn't matter. So here we're just setting that. Now if you wanted to make the fill image optional, you could just do a check here to make sure that fill image is not null before setting this and everything would just work fine. Now let's take one quick look at the reset method. Reset just sets pointer down to false because if we've reached the end, we want to you know unset that, it's no longer down. Or if we've just released in on pointer up, we're no longer holding the pointer down. We reset the pointer down timer. This is so that um, if we didn't do this when we held it, it would count up. Maybe it got to like one and a half seconds, we released. If we held it again for another half second on a two second timer, it would make it all the way there. So we wanna reset that. And then again, we just reset the fill image. And realistically, like we're doing the division here, but this is the same as setting it to zero because pointer down timer is zero. So we're just setting the fill amount back to zero to flip that little bar back to the beginning. And that's kind of all there is to it. The code is pretty simple. Um, I'll have the code linked so you can grab it and just drop it into something. Again, you don't need a button necessarily. You could have a button on top of there too. I just like using a button as a starting point because it gives me an image and a little text thing and it looks kind of like a button. So just a good starting point to kind of begin with. Um, if you have questions about this, you want to see more UI related stuff, just let me know. Drop a comment below or send me an email at jasonunity3d.college. Um, and then of course, don't forget to like, share and all that fun junk. All right, thanks for watching.